Hey guys, it's Kyle down here at LunaCycle. Today I'm going to show you how to install the pedal kit on the Telaria Triple X. Alright, so included in the Triple X pedal kit, in no particular order, you have, of course, the pedals, you have a shorter kickstand, uh, you have the crank arms, you have the main pedal shaft or axle, uh, you have both new pedal brackets. You have a split clog to go over the jack shaft. You have the freewheel. You have a half length chain. You have some little bits here to tidy up the rear brake hose. Um, you also have a little triple X battery lid um, conversion kit, which converts it to bolts. Um, I'll show you how to install that. Uh, you also have a little straight edge ruler to get everything lined up right. And finally, you do have a 25 tooth rear sprocket um, most guys are never going to use that, but they do include it, and it makes it so when you pedal the bike, you can actually move at speed instead of just a few miles an hour. So let's get started, and we're going to show you how to install all this stuff. Alright, so the first step in installing the pedal kit is removing your old peg brackets and pegs. Um, you do need to reuse your old kickstand sensor, so I'm going to show you the best way to transfer that over. Um, these peg bracket bolts can be very tight. You may need to use a pretty big 6 mil wrench to crack these loose. Um, but once you get these about halfway out, go ahead and grab a 15 mil socket and remove this peg. It's going to be a whole lot easier for you to transfer this kickstand sensor with this peg removed. Alright, so once you've, once you've got your peg off of there, you can go ahead and fully remove this. But remember, this is going to be attached by your little kickstand wire. And so don't, don't let it fall. So as you see here, you have your kickstand, and you do have a fair amount of wire coming out. I do recommend you put a little bit of oil on this, because this does need to thread out of this and into your new bracket. So with a 12 mil open end wrench, you go ahead and loosen this little nut right here. And then you will want to rotate the whole bracket to thread this all the way out. And you can see if you had the peg still on there, it's gonna get in your way. So be patient with this. You don't wanna twist the wire. You wanna be sure this is unthreading. If you mess up this wire, we're probably not just going to send you another one. Alright, so once you've got this off, you can go ahead and remove the other peg bracket. Um, I'm not going to show you that, that one just comes right off. Alright, now, now the next step is going to be to disconnect the rear shock from the swing arm. This will give you a whole lot more room to work. All right, now some of the bikes will have a plastic cover over the jack shaft, mostly the red ones. Um, if it does have a plastic cover, you will need to remove it. There's two little screws here and one screw here. That little cover is not compatible with the pedal kit. Um, you also want to check and see most of the bikes will have this little brake hose guide already installed. Um, but for the bikes that don't, they include a little hose guide bracket. Now remember you are assembling or installing a little cog on the jack shaft here. You do need to be sure that your rear brake hose doesn't touch that. So be sure there's something holding the rear brake here. And then more importantly, they do include a little flexible metal hose guide, which is going to get installed in between this little battery lid bolt. Um, included with the kit is Something to delete the little quick release style ones. Um, if you're tired of fiddling around with quick releases, you can install this bolt. It does come with a new nut that it threads into in the back, which is held on with a little C-clip. But this was originally for a prototype version of this pedal kit where you did need to remove these. Um, but we're including them anyhow. 
this kit that's which we're offering now it does work with the quick releases so installing this may be the most painful part of this whole install it can just be a little bit hard to reinstall this once you're done so go ahead and fully unthread this and then this little guide will go over this and you will need to carefully thread this back into that nut and like I said this may be a little bit difficult we'll go ahead and fully secure this once we've got the shock reinstalled and the hose is at the proper length for now you can just push the hose out of your way and we're gonna go ahead and install the sprocket now the sprocket which goes on the jack shaft is in two halves and in one of those halves you will see a spot for a little set screw uh, the set screw keeps this from slipping when you're pedaling so you can go ahead and put that in finger tight for now now the easiest way to line this up is to look for the Tolaria logo and line this up with the vertical T. You can then drop these bolts into place and these get tightened down with a T25. Now you want these bolts to be fully tight. There should be no gap on the top or the bottom when you're done. And then go ahead and tighten down the set screw with a three mil. Get that nice and tight as well. Now your next step is gonna to be to install the drive chain. To install the drive chain, you do need a little chain tool. Um, we put a link in the description where you can get these. It's just a basic chain tool. Now you'll notice this is a half link chain. One end is smooth and the other side has bumps in it. You'll also see a little arrow. So the side with the bumps in it is going to go towards the jack shaft. And if you look in the little chain bag, you will see a little one-time use pin. Now the pin has a pointed tip at one end and a flat tip on the other. You're going to want to go pointed end in first. So push it in as far as you can by hand and then you will need to use a chain tool to push this this area into the chain here and then you'll break off the pointed tip. Go ahead and push this pin most of the way in. You will see about two millimeters on either side of this still left sticking out. So you got about two mils on that side and two mil on that side. And you can take pliers or your chain tool and snap this other end of pin just right off. You can see you have the same amount sticking out on this side as you do on this side. And go ahead and just wiggle this a little bit to free it up. And next, we can go ahead and continue with the install by installing the kickstand side bracket. Um, and then lastly, we'll be installing the opposite side bracket. All right, now it's time to install the kickstand side bracket. Um, the first thing you want to do is install the little sensor itself. So go ahead and put a little oil on these threads. It's going to help you install this sensor. Now again, you don't want to rotate this wire. You do want to rotate just this peg bracket. You can see the sensor is going to go in this direction. And this can be a little tedious, but take your time and you should be able to get this installed. All right, now if you set it up with only a few little threads sticking out, the sensor should be in the right position. You won't be able to tell until you fully install the kickstand. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and tighten down 
the little jam nut. That'll keep this from unthreading. So next we can very loosely install the two peg mounting bolts. Uh, you don't want to tighten these down yet and I'll show you why. All right, now it's time to install the freewheel onto your main pedal axle, and then we can go ahead and mock this up into place. Now the freewheel is directional, and this axle is also directional. So you can see you have one little bearing stop on this side and one bearing stop on this side. Um, the one that has the little step on it goes to the right side, and the one that doesn't have a step and is actually adjustable is on the left side. They all have little set screws in them. Uh, these set screws go into holes, so this side is not adjustable. You would make all your adjustments on this side. So this freewheel, it should be threaded into place with the four little notches facing up. And you can go ahead and just kind of thread this onto the little mount. Get it as tight as you can with your hands, but then I'll show you how to tighten this down in a moment. Now you do want to leave this loose for now because you will want to line this up with the top top cog. You want the chain to be perfectly straight. Um, but for now we can go ahead and remove the two nuts and then mock this up into place. Alright now it's time to insert the axle into the kickstand side. To do that you want to go in between the little drive chain and underneath the gold chain and you should be able to get the axle into this bearing pretty easily. Now the reason the reason you're leaving that side loose is so you can go ahead and install this chain onto the freewheel and once you have that chain installed onto the freewheel <clears throat> it's time to install the right side bracket um, there's nothing fancy going on over here. I'm just going to install the two bolts and then we're going to go ahead and tighten down all four of these. Now I'm going to go through with the impact and tighten all four, two on this side, two on this side of the main mounting brackets. All right, and you can see everything will kind of pop into place. The next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and grab one of the crank arms and you will want to begin with rotating this a little bit just to make sure everything's settled into place. Um, if you can rotate it by hand, that's great. Um, before we go ahead and align the top cog with the freewheel, you do want to go ahead and push this little bearing stop out and tighten both of the little set screws on it. These are both three mils. There's one on the bottom and there's one on the top. All right, to properly align the top cog with the freewheel, I have noticed if you just take a crank arm and rotate this a few turns, it will kind of center the rear or the bottom freewheel. Um, but Talaria went ahead and included a nice little straight edge. Um, this you can hold up against each side here and be sure this is perfectly straight. But I have noticed that the rotating technique does seem to work pretty good. If you ever hear noise when you're riding, you may want to readjust and recenter the bottom freewheel. And again, there are two set screws on this. There's one on the bottom and one on the top. And you want to be sure you don't accidentally move this when you're tightening it. So go ahead and tighten it down. Go ahead and rotate this a few times. Looks like we're plenty centered. If we are making noise, I'll go ahead and readjust this later. All right, now it's time to reinstall the rear shock. All right, 
right now it's very important to secure the rear brake hose from making contact with this cog you also want to be sure it doesn't make contact with the belt so using that little wire strap that Telaria provided they recommend you wrap it around the quick release like that and it's going to hold your rear brake hose free of the belt and the small cog they also include a few zip ties you can throw a few zip ties on here also um, for a little extra peace of mind now the next step after that is going to be to install the crank arms and kickstand and then you will be able to go ride so the crank arms are labeled left and right left goes on the kickstand side and the little nuts are different on the kickstand side they are reverse thread so you want to be sure you install a little washer and then the nut nice and snug and this is lefty tighty so get these nice and tight otherwise these will fall off and they'll probably need to be replaced now we do have our upgraded luna titanium spindle carbon fiber pedals we're going to be installing these today they are a nice little upgrade from the stock ones and these get tightened with a six mil from the back and just twist it in the forward direction and these will tighten down Go ahead and get that nice and tight. Now, because these little brackets hold everything a little bit lower, um, they do include a shortened kickstand. Kickstand installs very easily. Um, if when you're done, the kickstand's hard to move, go ahead and drop a little bit of oil on this gap right here, and it should free it up. Tighten this down with a six mil, and then there's a 13 mil nut on the back. All right, now lastly is installing this kickstand spring. This can be a little dangerous if you just pry this on with a screwdriver. So I'm gonna show you a little trick right now on how to transfer the spring from your old kickstand onto the shorter kickstand. All right, now the easiest and safest way to install the spring is to actually transfer it from your old kickstand. So grab yourself a pile of pennies. You want to go ahead and take the kickstand and put it into the middle position. Uh, that's going to create the most amount of stress on this spring and give you little gaps right here. Now you want to go ahead and force these little pennies into these gaps. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow the spring to stay extended and it'll allow you to transfer it safely without having to pry it into place. All right, now once you've got as many pennies in there as you can, you should be able to put this up into its up position. And you should just be able to pull this spring off with very little effort. You can see your spring is still fully extended. You would then transfer this over to the pedal kit. Um, this little end with the longer spring goes up towards the top otherwise this may rub against the little nut if you do it the opposite it's really not the end of the world so you transfer it to the two pins go ahead and put it in its most extended position again and then you will want to use some pliers to just pull all these out and that's what i found to be safest and easiest way to transfer over the kickstand spring. Alright guys, now that you've successfully installed the XXX pedal kit, it's time to get out there and pedal your bike.